second and third graders. It's Mrs. Shea here. So I just wanted to go over the review answers, review questions and answers for last week for chapters three and four for social studies. So if you guys can follow along with me on your slideshow, I'm going to look up these questions with you and we will get those answered. So who or what was the legend of El Dorado? That's your first question um, for chapter three that you guys need to know. So the legend of El Dorado dates back to the arrival of the first Spanish explorers in America. It has been passed down for more than 100 years by explorers in search for the city of gold. So some believe that there was only one city of gold, and others believe that there were seven cities clustered near each other, which was called the cities of Cibola. So the main thing I want you guys to remember is that the legend was about a city of gold slash cities of gold. So some believe that there was one city, and then others believe that there were possibly seven cities clustered together. And the greatest mystery of El Dorado that you also need to know is that no one could find its location. The city seemed to move from place to place and no one was able to find them. Your second question is who was Coronado and what did he discover about Cibola? So Cibola, again, is the seven cities clustered together that they thought um, could be the um, city of El Dorado. So... Coronado was a Spanish official in Mexico who wanted to find the cities of Cibola, and he wanted to claim them for Spain and for himself. He discovered a small and not very friendly Indian village, and him and his men were very disappointed when they discovered some simple mud houses and surrounding poor villages. So basically, who was Coronado? He was a Spanish official in Mexico that wanted to find these cities um, of gold of Cibola, and instead he ended up finding some poor Indian villages. Um, third question is, what did him and his men end up discovering instead? Um, later on, he sent his men, um, scout, scouting parties of men, to various locations for the cities of Cibola because he did not want to give up. He really wanted to find them. However, they ended up finding what is now the Grand Canyon. So they discovered the Grand Canyon, um, which to us is a great discovery because if you've been there, it's very beautiful, but they did not find the cities of gold. So you do need to know that. The next question is, did anyone end up finding the city of El Dorado? Well, no, it is still legend and no one has able, been able to find it. So, which is why it's called the legend because it never existed, but um, no one ended up finding it, unfortunately. Um, so the last question is, what areas were discovered later to actually contain oil and natural gas deep beneath ground? So this is a treasure, believe it or not. This is, um, so the oil and the natural gas that was found um, produced a ton of wealth and um, money for the people that found it. But these places that you need to know were Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Kansas. So those are the four states um, that ended up finding, this was not to be discovered till later on. But these um, states ended up having all this natural gas and oil and um, was very, it was very, um, it was a huge discovery later on. So those are your last questions for the search for El Dorado. Um, early Spanish explorers, um, oh wait, it's not that one, excuse me. The Spanish North America chapter, next chapter. Um, you have questions in your last slide again, and we're going to go over those answers together. So for the first question is, after so many explorers failed to find the cities of gold, what did the Spaniards decide to do? So they decided that they had better things to do than send armies into lands inhabited by poor Indians. So they began to send Spanish merchant ships along the coast of Florida when they were hauling treasures back to Spain. So you need to know that they decided they had better things to do than send armies into the lands because they were inhabited by Indians. So they began to send their Spanish merchant ships along the coast of Florida when they were hauling treasures back to Spain. The next question is, where did they set up a series of colonies along the coast of Florida? You need to know that these uh, colonies were set along the coast of Florida, and this was to protect their ships from the English, Dutch, and French pirate ships that were trying to rob them of their treasure. So that is a very important question. So again, where did they set these colonies? Along the coast of Florida. You do not need to know why, but you do, you do need to know where. Um, what did Pedro Melenda succeed at establishing that Ponce de Leon failed to do? 
So he was successful at setting up a successful Spanish colony in Florida, which is called St. Augustine. The next question is, where did the Spaniards end up expanding their empire and how did they work with the native people? They moved north from Mexico into the American Southwest. So the American Southwest is the answer to that. And it says, and how did they work with the native people? Well, they um, began to build missions, which were created to keep the unfriendly native people under control. And they provided food and the safe place to live for the natives. As long as they lived like the Spaniards and gave up their old ways of life, including religious beliefs. So that's really important to know. So they worked with the native people by essentially providing them a place to live, food to eat, but they had to change their ways of life, which was a huge loss for the natives. So what was the mission life like? Your next question. Well, mission life centered on the church and the local priest was at the center of the community. And then you need to know the native people who worked on these ranches took care of the animals and crops were basically raised on the land near the mission and Indian men worked there and they worked the fields and native people were also taught skills to keep the mission going, such as the blacksmiths, carpenters and weavers. So main idea, mission life was centered on the church and the Native Americans were um, given lots of jobs essentially to make sure that the mission was taken care of. The last question is about the Pueblo Revolt. So what happened during the Pueblo Revolt? In some places, relationships between the Spanish settlers and Native people were more or less friendly or not good at all. But because the Spaniards had better weapons than the Native people, they used them to conquer and enslave many of the Natives. So this is what happened during the Pueblo Revolt. And the Natives um, were very angry about this and the loss of their freedom. And so um, there was many, many um, Indians um, that ended up losing their lives to the Spaniards during this time. So those are your guys' questions and answers for chapters three and four. I hope you guys are enjoying your reading. Again, um, reach out if you have any questions, and I'll be talking to you guys soon.